something a little bit different for you today. I know not everybody's going to be into this because not all of you are into comics and stuff like that. The reason uh, I'm into this sort of stuff will become uh, prevalent as we go along, I reckon, probably. But this is the um, the big sort of artist edition of uh, Tokyo Ghost. Uh, pencils uh, done by, and inking done by Sean Murphy. Great artist, really fantastic artist. This is the big one. This is like A3 size. So when you fold it out, it's like A2 size. It's, it's huge, uh, which is why I, as an artist, wanted it. Uh, and um, and yeah, let's show you it because I'll, I'll sort of explain on the hop why I'm uh, why I'm so interested in showing this. So, what you think about comic art generally? I'll flick through it as I'm talking. What you think about comic art generally is that you've got to have a really amazing grounding as a comic artist uh, in figure drawing, composition, perspective how to use inks, line weights, um, all kinds of things. You, you've got to be able to draw anything, basically. And this is a great example of that. What an amazing pair of pages this is. So first of all, you've got to be able to tell a story using pictures. That I'm less I'm less needing to do that as from what I do, but it's still interesting to see. But look at the use of perspective. It goes right back there. Right back there, you see the buildings there and everything. Then you've got this huge dynamic form coming through. Then you've got this beautiful backdrop just here. What's she up to there? Uh, all kinds of stuff happening around this. Details and bits and pieces. I love it. Absolutely love it. If you're interested in backgrounds, for instance, you know, as a grapher, you know, you know what a background uh, that is. Learning about backgrounds, perspective depth uh all that kind of, you know look at look at his line weight as he pushes back his lines become really really skinny the further back he goes the further forward he, he comes his lines get heavier his line weight gets heavier look at that line off his arm just there it's a really heavy brush stroke arm just there that just there it's a tiny little skinny line because he's pushing it back that's how he fools your eye fools your brain into thinking that this has all got huge depth enormous depth just a beautiful beautiful piece a spreading piece so yeah as a comic artist you've got to have grounding in, in in everything you've got to be able to draw anything anything everything this brickwork here he's done really kind of simple again look at the line weights he's used big thick one there thin one thick thin varies it he's done some you would call it cross hatching, but essentially it's just line shading just there because he hasn't cross hatched it. Uh, just to sort of put the, you know, the tiniest bit of depth and shadow into it. Bit of background detail there. Really clever. Um, yeah, again, look at this one here. Look at this. So, this, this little tiny spread here. Um, again, you've got the depth. You've got all this detail back here. And when you start looking at it, you realise that it's not hugely detailed. He's just, he's putting what he needs to put in. And the, the, the full character carries all the action and the attention. And this just fills in the rest of the space. So our brain creates the whole world. That's how it works. He's done it again here. Sean Murphy, by the way, is a master of this. If you don't know Tokyo Ghost, have a look. And the, the reason that this is so interesting is because Tokyo Ghost, if you buy the uh, the comics from Image or the trades, it's all coloured. And the colouring is beautiful because Hollingsworth's done all the colouring on it. And it is exquisite. But you can't see what you can see in the black and whites because this is what the artist would see. This is how he has penciled it and inked it at this size as well. Um, so I don't know how easy it is to get hold of one of these. This one cost me about eighty quid. I had to get it from uh, America. So I don't know. I don't you know. I can't recommend you get hold of one because I don't know if you can get hold of them or even if you know you can afford to get hold of them. I was a bit shocked having to spend that much money. It's just one that I really wanted because I wanted to see this artwork close up. This, I mean, look at that as a as a beautiful widescreen spread. All these cars coming towards you. This one that's wiped out in motion. Beautiful bit of background there. 
and it's just gorgeous. It is absolutely gorgeous. He totally creates that world. These buildings here, all spectators on every level, really makes me, I mean, God, I wish I had the patience. This, this would have taken a long time to do. I don't know how long exactly, but this would, this is a very involved piece. Look at what he does with the light as well. This is all, you know, this is in, this is bathed in lots and lots of light, but his background is quite dark. Street lights are on, it's night time. So you get all the street light illuminated stuff here. This is not heavily shaded. This is beautifully lined and the shine on this geezer's windscreen just here. And then in the background, the further it pushes back, gets darker so you begin to see the shines on things and i mean you know just and these bits here just sort of hinted in uh i tell you an artist who was really good at this pops 100 back in the day was brilliant at this sort of stuff just kind of little bits of light coming out of the darkness i've always been in love with that stuff i think it's it's so so brilliantly artistically clever kind of minimal use of of light look at that amazing Big car crash, impact, another one there. A sense of movement in this. It's just brilliant. But if you, you know, if you're interested, not everybody's want, wanting to be a character artist, I understand that. Uh you know, graffiti is is primarily about letters, isn't it? You know, so we, and we all start on letters and we all start by doing tags and stuff like that. Uh not everybody wants to do characters, I totally get it. Uh, if you do want to do characters and you're interested in backgrounds and uh, and you're moving through uh, the idea of doing characters and backgrounds with your letters as well, then I totally recommend basically sort of learning to, learning to illustrate like a comic artist does. That's what I did basically, which is why I'm why I'm pushing this on you today. Uh, and if you're not into it, then I totally get it. But if you are into it. This is the this is a great place to start. Use it looking and specifically though looking at black and white because if you look at color, color is about color because a lot of um, a lot of artists nowadays they do stuff a lot simpler than this. If you look at Rob Liefeld's modern stuff, for instance, he uh, he does very very simple line work and the colorist will fill his panels for him and uh, and they do it brilliantly. And again, as a, whether you're um, whether you're a letter artist, character artist, both, you know, all that, you've got to learn to use colour. And uh, colour is a really useful thing to do. But if you're if you if you want to do characters and backgrounds, you've got to learn about form, and you've got to learn about composition. I mean, to be honest, I think if you've got to be a, if you want to be a really great sort of production wall piecer. Not everybody does. Again, some people just want to be bombers. I respect that. I used to be a bomber back in the day. That's all I used to do. Uh, but if you want to do production walls and stuff, then you've got to uh, you've got to learn about composition. You can't just sort of just you know just fill all the space because it it do, it doesn't work. You know, for our brain, it's too much. Uh, you've got to learn how to use negative space, even if you don't call it that. You know, because terminology is just a shorthand of, of about knowing what people are talking about. You don't. You know, there are artists I know who. Uh, who use all this stuff and would never know any of the terms. Wouldn't know any of the terminology around it. Don't need to. All you need to be able to do is do it. That's a great, great panel there again. I want to talk about perspective in a minute. I'm going to show you a panel in a second, which is all about this. Is this one here. Look at this. So in our foreground, we've got our two characters here. This guy, this girl. Bit of background, she's got a big gun there, she's sitting on something there, 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 you know, he's on a chair. Bit of stuff in the foreground, bit of plant put in the, you know, so he's giving us depth. He, put, he puts this in the foreground, puts them behind that on that next plane there. Then in the next plane, you're seeing people, which pushes it back further, and they're going quite a long way back. But look at this background. This background's really great, and if I can just grab my, so I'll grab my uh, ruler, let's see where he's put. His vanishing point. So all his lines are coming. See where his lines are coming there? Down, down, like that, like that. And if these lines are coming into about there, then his vanishing point is about there. That's his vanishing point, which means that's his horizon. Now, if you look at where his eye line is there, it's pretty much similar. That's where his horizon sits. 
on his main character's eye line, just there, uh, which is a very common thing uh, if you if you if you're putting together a large scale, uh, big, huge amounts of depth kind of perspective piece like that, uh, and that's as far as I can tell, that's a one point perspective. You, meaning he's used one vanishing point to basically to bring all those lines off like that so it's all kind of so basically it's all going straight out at us off of one point uh try and find we'll see if we can find uh, a different one that is a, i mean god how many how many amazing spreads does this guy do he's incredible He's used a completely different viewpoint from this. That This is very what we call oblique, which is, it's not so much perspective, it's more, um, you've got parallel lines. The, the lines will run parallel like that. That's the angle you're looking at, and it works in an oblique way. Um, oh God, look at the big Doric columns just there and there. Uh, I wonder if he's used any perspective. Yes, he has. So he has used a bit of perspective. And I wonder how he's done it. Because if you look at this, so this, look at that column there, that's going in that direction, up like that. If we look at this column there, it's going up like that, because we're looking down into a scene. So the perspective is all going down like that. But it's the, but the vanishing point is going a long way, like way off the paper. So uh, I wonder how he's judged that. He might have even judged that by eye, you know. Um, I mean, to be honest, I do a lot of perspective by eye. Uh, really skilled artist like this, this guy, who is a, just a master. He probably does, he probably does that as well. He probably does a lot of it by eye. Because I'm looking at all these lines, thinking these are probably, these are probably in perspective as well. Yeah, they will be. They will all be in perspective too. God damn, that's good. <laughs> that's really, really good. And added to that, you've got figures within that. You've got your foreground figures here. We're looking down on the foreground figure from the back there. She's in this sort of profile, semi-profile, three-quarter, well, three-quarter, really. Um, three-quarter is where you're slightly more turned towards the camera, us being the camera. So good. So good. Absolutely love this guy. Sean Murphy's done, what's he done? White Knight, Batman. Um, he's done Chrononauts, that's another one of his. He's done, uh, oh God, what else has he done? Let's think, let's think. Punk Rock Jesus, that was one of his. Amazing bit of composition there. All these ideas. I won't go into the story very much because uh, it's not even spoilers. I'm not even gonna tell you what the, what the story is. I just want you to be able to look at, look at the art and, and see if you're interested. Very sort of future scape, as you can see, sort of Los Angeles in the future. But there's something coming up which is going to be absolutely gorgeous to you. Uh, and uh, for me, it's, it's the even after the uh, the spread you've seen already. I think the one coming up. Look at that! I love that whale, that little um, submarine machine there. Oh damn! That makes me want to draw machines. Uh, Beautiful rocks and uh, what do you call it? Flora overgrowth stuff. Submarines, it's coming in. Look at that. Look at the way he's done his water. That is a great, simple way using black ink, just using blacks of drawing water. You totally know what it is. Bridge in the distance, beautiful city right back there. You see the depth he's achieving. Oh, little panel like that. That's in real size. That's a real size. What is that? That's like, I'll do it in inches. For you guys who uh, who do imperial measurements, that's just under ten inches wide. Amazing, right? Big black area behind there. Not not scared of just doing a big black area because you've got so much detail in there that all that negative space there works beautifully. I mean, stuck a speech bubble in the middle of it. Obviously, that's fine. But you've got you know you've got you've got a big bit of beautiful foreground in this ship. You have two figures, amazing background, great big load of black there, done the same there. Just tiny bits of stuff picked out there, tiny bits of light. And all you, again, look at that, water, mild reflection, 
great reflection there and we get water it's just it's a gift for people learning to to draw stuff to see how this stuff is done i mean that's just fabulous that as a panel that's fabulous anyway look at the again the depth this character here this samurai character are you falling in love with this piece yet <laughs> can you understand why i did uh, it's just perfect to me as a fantasy world as well to create it's just i mean look at that water it's so good so good anyway it's coming up it's going this chase through here and look at that this is my favorite spread downtown tokyo the buildings in the background he goes right to you know look at these these ones far in the background these tiny tiny sort of skinny little lines he uses to ink it in with the with the trees on the top of the buildings how they've overgrown and he then pulls it forward and these are slightly heavier and look at the line weight is not much heavier it's just a tiny bit heavier goes into a bit more detail bit more bit more until finally he's right on top of us and the detail and the shadows are much heavier uh but he's not he's not done yet because what he wants to do is he wants to pull us even further forward so he puts this massive great tree in here and this is where the lines and the shadow can get super heavy because he's he really literally is right on top of us at that point and all this, this line weight, look at that, look at that line weight there. Compare it to these at the back. And that's how you bring something forward. That's how you create depth and the illusion of depth. What an amazing composition. Yeah, you know, your eye is just drawn to this. And you've got your figures, your figures in this chase thing. Great idea to put, I mean, you know, you could put these figures anywhere, by the way. You wouldn't want to put them anywhere in there because there's too much detail. So you want to put them somewhere where there's space. So you slam this guy right in the middle of this space here. You don't put anything in there because you want to create the space for him. Then this guy is trickier because he's in front. You've got to put him on the, you can't put him anywhere in there, like we just said. So you put him over here and he puts this tree in. And if you look at this tree, there's a nice bit of negative space there that he leaves for this character and for him to throw a shadow. It's beautiful. It's mastery is what this is. It's an absolute mastery of the form. Sean Murphy is, uh, he's probably my favorite artist working in comics at the moment. Uh, he just has such a deft touch and his, his creative backgrounds and, uh, and, and overall compositions and everything are just perfection to me perfection and he's not he's not done yet <laughs> there's more there's even more you get you get this again and you look he's using a similar kind of thing here he's got the big so you've got big foreground tree here then on the next plane back you've got some big rocky outcrop or whatever then right in the back he pushes you right back again and you get more of this beautiful cityscape and because he's done that this is how comics work, right? Because he's done that, he's ha he's helped your brain to create the world. So now in the next panels, he doesn't need to do anything. Or just a tiny, he's done a tiny bit there. Where this geezer stood. Tiny bit, but he doesn't need to. He doesn't need to there. Again, you've got a bit there. That's all he needs. You can leave all this negative space because of this. The world is created for you. Here, same, and then we're back. Another big spread, let you know, get, you know, get us get us into the time, the space, the position where the characters are in, in, uh, in juxtaposition with each other. All that. Again, great. I mean, look at that. You know, we get such a sense of chaos and an overgrowth and deserted city and all that kind of stuff. All that great stuff. Oh, God, look at it. So dark up here. Dark and black and shadowy. And then... Much lighter over here, you can see much more going on there. And the buildings back there that he's just sort of inked in. Even the tiny, it's in the tops of them up there, you can see. And then down here, if you look at this, so you've got a bit of foreground rockiness here, just to let you know that, you know, she's on the ground. You can see the grass sticking up in front of her there. In the background, 
I've got them tiny little scratchy lines just to let you know that that's sort of where the tops of the buildings are, all that. Wonderful, absolutely wonderful. And there you go, you've got your final page, which is a killer ending for this particular issue, obviously, uh, which is you've got, I mean, beautiful. So look at the composition here. Composition comes round like that. And when you've got something that comes round like that, it sort of directs you into whatever's happening here. It's just perfect. Absolutely perfect. Pitch perfect. The detail on it, look at all these little bits of fungus he's done, all the mushrooms and everything. You've got guys, but everything, have you noticed that everything is pointing into this area? Everything's directing you to look here. Even these guys in the background are poking putting their bows and arrows and everything into this area into her in the center here he's looking there she's looking there that the rabbit <laughs> everything all of it is going into that direction it's a, a master class in composition and line work perspective inking Looks like he's used multiple tools to ink as well. You can see where he's used the brush every so often. You can see where he's using really, really tiny tight pens. Um, yeah, it's 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 a thing of beauty. And, uh, and I hope that you got as much out of that as, uh, as I do and did. And, uh, you know, if it prompts you to go and have a look at some comics, then uh, I'll, I'll be happy with that. Uh, Tokyo Ghost by Rick Remender, Sean Murphy and Hollingsworth on the cars and uh, well worth your time. Sort of futuristic sci-fi. I won't go into the story of it. You know, just have a look if you're interested. Remender's a genius writer anyway. You know, you love his stuff if you're into comics. But yeah, there you go. Tokyo Ghost. Hope you enjoyed that, guys.